Hello everyone and welcome to Stratus Bytes, the videos that explain networking technologies and concepts in less than 8 minutes. My name is Victor and I am very happy to be here with you today. The topic of discussion is 3-tier versus 2-tier network architecture. A 3-tier design consists of three layers, the access layer, distribution layer, and core layer. The access layer simply provides access connectivity for all the end clients or end devices in the network. So basically we're going to be plugging in all of our PCs, laptops, IP cameras, IP phones, etc. into the access layer switches. Also, if we're providing wireless connectivity, the access points will be connected to the access layer switches as well. As a matter of fact, the access points are also considered part of the access layer. In most situations, we're going to have layer 2 switches only or layer 2 switch stacks in the access layer. So, essentially, we're going to be defining some VLANs and then we're going to start segmenting traffic up on ingress into the network. Then we have the distribution layer. The distribution layer will consist of switch stacks or maybe modular switches that will aggregate the uplinks coming from the access layer. Best practices dictate that we provide a ratio of 20 to 1 over subscription from access layer to distribution. However, most modern layer 2 switches already have 10 gig uplinks. So if you have a single 48 port uh, 1 gig switch, a single 10 gig uplink will be sufficient. Also, to be covered against um, distribution switch failure or uplink failure, it is advisable to run dual uplinks from access to distribution. And also we can do link aggregation there as well, so we mitigate spanning tree convergence and also take advantage of the extra bandwidth. The, the layer 3 boundary begins in the distribution layer. So if we have intervalent uh, intervalent traffic, this traffic will be routed through distribution layer switches. So basically the distribution layer switches are going to be doing intervalent routing and we will also route traffic to the core if we have traffic that needs to go to the internet or or um, to another location through the WAN. Now the core layer is as, as you know, the, 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 the most critical uh, layer of the network. Typically we have here chassis based switches and um, with redundant components. And also the best practices say that we provide a 4 to 1 over subscription from distribution to core. The core, uh, the core layer is, is, is basically the, uh, the, the point of concentration for all the other layers in the network. They, um, it, it provides fast switching or fast forwarding for traffic going from distribution switch to distribution switch and also as I said before it is the one that routes traffic that needs to go to the internet or maybe that needs to go through the WAN to another uh, different location. On the other hand we have the two-tier network architecture. A two-tier is basically uh, a, a two-layer design. We have the access layer and then we have what is called the collapsed core or basically core and distribution layer combined. This, is, this model is suitable for um, small offices or very small buildings. Basically the access layer will be doing exactly the same thing we discussed before. We're going to be running then dual 10 gig uplinks from access to core, okay, with link aggregation as well. And then the core layer will be doing, or the collapse core will be doing the layer 3 uh, forwarding. So if we have intervalent routing, it will be routed through the core. And also if we need if we have traffic going to the internet or or through the WAN, it will be routed through the core as well. Now the, the key the key thing is to determine when to go with a, 
a collapse score design or two tier versus a three tier design. So, as I said before, uh, for small, sm small offices or very small buildings, there's no need to add extra complexity. A two tier design will be sufficient. We can have simply have access layer switches or switch stacks on every floor, connect all, all the end uh, devices or end clients there, and then aggregate everything on the core um, on the core switch, then perform the the intervillian routing through the core, and also the, the layer three routing going either to the internet or through the WAN through the core as well. Now, in some situations, even if we have a single office, but the, the office is huge, for example, assume like um, maybe 500 or even 1,000 employees per floor, sometimes you're going to have a bunch of access switches on the same floor that need to be aggregated on a distribution switch on a single floor. And then from each floor, you're going to have to run uplinks to a core layer. So in that case, if you have a huge office, even if it is a single office, but the building is, 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 is big with a lot, a lot of people, then a three-tier design makes sense as well in terms of scale. Now, the classic example for three-tier design is campus. So imagine like the classic, a, 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 a classic a university with different buildings. In this case, a three-tier design make, make more sense because we have the access layer switches on each floor, then we have a distribution switch per building okay, that aggregates the, um, the access layer and also does the intervillian routing for traffic that goes, that stays within the same building. And then in case that we need to go to, or to, to send data to a different building, then the, the, the core layer okay, will forward traffic that goes from building to building and also will route traffic that needs to go through the WAN or um, to the internet. Now, if we have to add a new building into the mix here, then this design is more scalable as well because we can have the access layer for that building, then a distribution layer for that building, and then we simply connect the distribution layer to the core layer of the campus and right away we have um, we can reach every other building in the campus and also have connectivity uh, to the internet or uh, to the WAN. And that's it folks, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.